today on this old house. The new part is level, the old part is not. When we're through, you'll never know the difference. So Karen, we've got the whole kitchen uh, laid out pretty much and approved by the homeowners? Yes, we have it all figured out. And guess what, there's two of these that go together. This is only half? Wow. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here in Concord, Massachusetts where we are working on this what is now a humble looking Cape built in the 1880s. Humble because a lot of the back has been pulled off. There was a two car garage that came down, another two car garage is going in with a second story addition above it. Off the back right here, this shape, this is going to be a one story office for our homeowner. A hallway leading back to this corner right here where much of the new space is going. That's going to include a couple of decks, a lot of glass, a modern flair to it. And you can see the perimeter wall right down there just above that footing. It goes all the way out to the right and then it returns back to the left into that chimney, which is why Mr. McCullough is getting ready to do some flashing for us. Hey Mark. Hey Kevin. Got a bit of a flashing job today. Let me get that for you. Yeah, we got a flashing detail today. Uh, this is where Charlie's bringing the addition in, as you can see by the footing. So wall gets built right on this here. That's right. So we're going to follow that wall with a little bit of block because this elevation is going to be buried a bit. So we're going to want to make sure we keep Charlie's work above ground. Gotcha. And that's why we're going to throw these two courses of block in. Block in first, and then we frame wood on top of that. Right. And it connects to this chimney. It does. So you can see the strapping that we have, Kevin. That's going to act as a guide. I'm actually going to get into this machine, and I'm going to run my grinder all the way up using this strapping as a guide. I'm going to go up about 24 feet, so it's two stories. Nice and tall up nice there. Nice and tall. That'll take care of both stories for Charlie. Yeah. And then uh, if we have to, we'll reroute the saw back down. We'll really clean out that joint. So that's when we're going to take this piece of copper flashing. This piece is going to ride into the riglet that we just cut into the brick. Yeah. This flat flange, as we call it, is going to ride onto Charlie's wall. We're going to take another piece of flashing. We're going to ride it right down his flange, cover his wall, and we'll make the whole thing watertight. And it starts with laying this block? Starts with putting the block down. All right, let's get some All right, All right, this is what we call Durawall. It's for lateral movement. It's uh, number nine wire and it's just masonry reinforcement. Perfect. Okay, we already have our lateral reinforcement in. Now we're going to put in our vertical reinforcement. This is a carbide tip drill on our hammer drill. And all we're going to do is go straight up. And that hole receives the rebar mark? Yes, that's it. Sits in nice, but the first thing we're going to do is get some epoxy to make sure we anchor this.
right, so what we're gonna do, Kevin, is we're gonna take our grinder, we're gonna ride this piece of strapping all the way down, we're gonna use it as a guide, but once our wriggler is cut in, strapping's gone. All right, Kev, you wanna hand me that wall? So you got a little bit of a mock-up of what yep. our wall's gonna look like. Bring it right in. All right. So that's what Charlie's gonna build on top of your block. Yep. He's got the sheathing, hangs down just a tiny bit. That's right, and here's our copper. Slips in very nicely into our riglet. So do you just set that into the brick plane or are you gonna do any sort of caulking? So what I'm gonna do is get a caulking. I'm gonna run it right through the riglet. I'm gonna take my copper, I'm gonna wiggle it in and make sure that bonds properly. Gotcha. And then I know I'm gonna be tight. But after that, I'm gonna take what we call uh, a generic term of ice and water, okay? Sticky side is the back, it goes up against the green. It goes all the way into our flash. It'll bridge the copper and the green that's how we know we're going to be waterproof. Right. And we do that all the way up. And we have a nice tight bond between the brick and the new wall. So copper goes in after Charlie frames up the wall. And once that's all sealed up, he puts claps or shingles on this. We're going to put this on first. Yep. And then he goes right with a piece of trim. And then the clapboard's into the trim. So we've got a lot of the new frame in for the flooring for the new addition and everything here has to be level. Unfortunately, we're going against the existing house that's not level. Now this is an addition that was built probably in the 60s or 70s, not really sure, is that marries up against the original house right here that was built in 1890s. But for some reason, this part of the addition of the old addition was down. So. I know they made the floor level, but let's see how it looks. Let's check it right here, Charlie. So they installed this new beam with the post down below. They made this flush with the new addition, and that brought this joist up also. And around the center here is probably our low point. Quarter. Yeah, yeah. it progressively gets worse. Yep, three-eighths. And uh, it's half an inch to five-eighths right there. So yeah. yeah, so this was down right here, almost three-quarters if I can remember. But this is a wide open floor plan, and we want this floor, the transition from the old to the new, to be nice and even. What we could do is we could actually, well, I see three things that we could do. We could go down below, put a, put a beam on the ceiling, and jack this up, and just make it straight from this point to this point, because that's even there, right? It is, okay. but the problem is to finish room down below, finish plaster ceiling. Oh, that's right, too. All right, so that's an option that we don't want to use right now. There was the other option that I was thinking that we can try to break these nails free here and see if we can pull up the joist 
make it flush with here, but then we got to worry about still cracking the ceiling. Uh, I think what we'll do is, you said this was about a half an inch here? Yeah. And it goes up to nothing here? Yes. All right, so why don't we cut out a section of the floor? Let's come back here, maybe three feet, take up these boards, and we'll either cut wedges to go on the top so they marry into the top of this flush here and they disappear down here, and we'll bring the, the new subfloor in across, and that should make everything straight. That'll work perfect. All right, let's pull some nails. All right. We got the nails out that we need to, and we'll probably find that we missed one somewhere. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we'll cut these boards right here straight. We'll just continue this joint, cut that one right across, and snap a line for that one. All set? Yep. So what we need to do is bring this end up flush with that end. You can see it's not going to make it. Now I have two options. We've taken a 2x4 and we've cut it a little bit long. But we can take the 2x4 and cut a wedge to fit on top of this, make it flush with this, and go down to nothing. To mark that wedge, so if you hold that there, Charlie, slide it under. We put it in here like this, slide it back to me. All right, so with this piece flush with the beam right here and tight to the underside of the floor, we could actually take a pencil and mark the side of this right here where it meets and cut this thin wedge. But that's very, really time consuming. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the piece just like we have it and screw it and glue it to the side of the joist. All right, so let's put some glue on there. What we're going to use is a foam adhesive. It's as strong as a polyurethane adhesive. Uh, it's the stuff we use underneath our subfloors when we're screwing the subfloor to the joist. It's strong and it eliminates floor squeaking. You okay there? Yeah, you good? Yeah, good. Go ahead. So that's perfect. Our transition is going to be great. When they put the subfloor down, we want to make sure that they put about two feet on the old work and two feet on the new work, and then that transition will just disappear. That's right. Going to look good. You know, you know for 90 minutes worth of work, a nice straight floor. It's well worth it. Absolutely.
Hey, Karen. Hey, Charlie. Kevin. Hi, how are you? All right. So I am excited to see the kitchen plans, but not as excited about the new floor, Charlie, huh? Look at that. You can't even tell anymore. Level out on the new, transition nice and straight to the old. I'm giving it the walking test to see if I notice any difference, and I don't. But that's hidden well. Can't feel that at all. You can't, except looking at the old floorboards to the new subfloor. This is flat and straight. Yeah. Tommy, do anything? Of course. <laughs> All right, Karen, so we've got the kitchen laid out pretty much and approved by the homeowners for the most part? We do, yeah. We're in really good shape after working through some measurements and getting it all squared away. So, all right. so where do you want to start in terms of showing us the layout? Why don't we start with the island? Nice mock-up. Can you me in? Yeah. Charlie, this is next level. No cardboard boxes, huh? It's not, it's not a bad size island. And guess what? There's two of these that go together. This is only half? It's only half. All right, so yeah. what's the full length? Uh, a little over 12 feet, 52 okay. wide. That'll, uh, that'll serve their purposes, I'm sure. It will. Watch that corner, that's good. A little spline here to put them together. Uh, look at you. Okay. Love it. Fix that right there, wow, yeah. wow. Okay, one of the biggest. <laughs> so obviously, Karen, this is uh, center stage for this kitchen. It is, yeah. There'll be seating all along that run at the end there. They're a young family, busy, yeah. um, and this is set up to grow with them. Okay, and the materials and the layout of everything here? So a big factor in this island is this oak, which is going to form a U-shaped um, piece with a floating on that end and floating on the back where the seating is. So two pieces. So this is like a perimeter detail mm -hmm. going around here? Yep, a okay, perimeter detail. Okay, so this detail. is seating here. And then this quartzite um, will be the center of the island on the working side. Oh, look yeah. at that quartzite. Yeah. That is a lot of movement. Well, it, it is. It's <laughs> called Explosion Blue. Well, it's exploding. <laughs> and it really ties together all of our colors and everything that we have, the perimeter color, the island color. Yeah. Okay, any appliances? Do we have fire or water in here? Well, we have a, a sink here. Yeah. This is a prep sink. Oh, just a prep and sink. And right. we have the main sink over there, nice. um, which is a big 45-inch sink. So let's lay it out, right? I mean, we've got the island in place. I presume you don't have any more mock-ups, but... No, this is it. All right, so let's start over here, I guess, with the sink, Charlie. No mock-ups, maybe we lay it out? Yeah, right here, Kevin's the sink, and I'll just do a little, a little spray here. That whole thing's the sink? Whole thing, 45 wide. Big sink, Karen, big yeah, sink. Yeah, that's a big sink, but they're a growing family, and they wanted to have a lot of um, utility here for years to come. We'll have the... Dishwasher over here, some storage cabinets here um, to hide the toaster oven. Um, and then coming this way, some cabinetry with a waterfall countertop edge yep. right there. Kind of stops right about here. Okay. Which allows the banquette seating to die into the side of the waterfall edge. Uh, yeah. And that will go around the corner. So corner banquette means little breakfast table in this side right here? Yes, we're, we'll have an eat-in kitchen. Um, the table that's being used is their existing table that's special to them. So they were really happy to be able to work that in. Okay. Um, so L-shaped seating. Right. Um, Charlie, windows are going away, right? This one goes away, but we actually have a corner unit here, double hung another double hung, and then two more. Gotcha, and we know that the fireplace is staying. This is gonna be a big feature in this kitchen, right? This fireplace will be updated um, with just modern cladding, um, but it's an important element to the homeowners, so that's staying. Mm -hmm. And then as we go out here, this is going to all be open. There'll be a staircase here that goes to the upstairs, but this will all be windows with a with a beautiful ridged ceiling. Beautiful. Um, glass everywhere out to the new deck. So that's going to be cool, right? Yeah, gonna that's going to be really cool. Old house cool. transitions to the new. And then coming around here to the range elevation, this wall will extend out to approximately here. Okay. And then we'll have a column freezer here. So, which, that, so that's just freezer. Just freezer. Right. And it will be covered in a cabinet panel. Yeah. Um, and then we'll have a bank of cabinets here. Great. Uh, then a 48-inch range right here. 48. Yep. 
Go big or go home, huh? Yep, six burners and a griddle. So sort of centered right there, okay. Then another bank of cabinets equal in size to the ones to the left of the range. Yep. And finally, a column refrigerator. So again, all refrigeration. That's very much the trend these days with mm -hmm. all refrigeration one side, all freezer yeah. on the other side. A couple cabinet samples that you've got for us here. Which goes where? So this is the perimeter cabinetry. It's okay. sort of a tan. Yep, so arguably your base cabinets mm -hmm. and then the panel for fridge and freezer, for example, all the way up there. Correct. Which means that the darker blue goes for, for your island. island. Also a very common feature, right? Where you've got two different color yeah. cabinets. Yeah. You get a little pop of color. And would you call that uh, stone on top? Explosion blue. Explosion blue. Now, and... you, now you understand why it works. <laughs> I do. All right. So I tell you, you know, the plans are great, but the mock-up and the layout really helps you sort of figure out, you know, how the whole thing's going to work. So thank you for that, Karen. Oh, yeah. My pleasure. All right, Charlie, we are moving along. What are we looking at next week? Well, yeah, well, a lot of framing going on for the next several weeks, but we're going to be working on the deck with the living space below it. And so we have to have waterproofing underneath that decking. Ah, that's going to be a cool little challenge for you right there. Yeah, it'll all pitch out and drain off the end. All right, well, we'll get all of that and plenty more next time. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor for This Old House here in Concord, Massachusetts. Karen, thank you so much for this. This really sort of pulls it together. Next time on This Old House. New windows replace our rotten bay. First step is demo. And if the toilet in the bathroom above goes where it's supposed to go, there's a joist perfectly in the way of the drain. We know how to fix that. The government estimates that on any given night, there could be as many as 100,000 veterans with no home to sleep in. And that's why this historic school building is a very special place.